Welcome to a short tutorial on PSpice, and in fact we're actually going to be using Capture, which is contained within a Cadence software package. Cadence bundles all of these pieces together. We will be interfacing mostly through Capture, and that's what I want to demonstrate today, and we're going to do it by implementing this particular circuit in a capture schematic and running a simulation. We know what we should be obtaining from that simulation, which is this voltage divider behavior in this two resistor DC voltage source interconnected circuit. In order to get started let, by using capture, you can either download the software onto your machine, and there's instructions for doing that, or you could use the PSpice that's preloaded into the computer labs in room 232 of the ECE building. If you haven't already pinned this Capture software package, Capture CIS Lite, onto your taskbar, which you probably haven't done. You might need to find it a different way. If we come over to the Start menu, click on Cadence. Again, Cadence is sort of the parent of this different software packages that can be executed. We're going to be doing Capture, so let's now click on the Capture program and open up this ORCAD Capture Lite start page and we're now ready to get started working through the PSpice homework tutorial or the PSpice homework. This is the tutorial trying to explain that that Dr. Marslin has created. In order to do that we've now opened up Cadence. We can now begin a new project by going to the file menu, drop-down menu, New, and Project. We'll need to name this if we now say this is a voltage divider. And we'll want to make sure that this radio button, PC Analog or Mixed AD, is connect or turned on or selected. And we will want to locate this in a particular location that it can now access. If a lot of times when you begin, this may be blank, you'll need to tell it where to go. I'm simply putting it in the Cadence directory, and I created a file, my work, within that C file or hard drive location of Cadence. I can click OK. I now want to actually create a blank project, hit OK, and now Cadence or Capture does what it wants to do and we now end up with this schematic capture window with all these little dots. We're ready to start building up our electric circuit schematic. In order to do that we need to find the parts and we can do that by saying let's place a part either voltage supply or resistors. Let's start with the DC voltage supply. We say part and it's now opened up this additional window, sub-window within the capture program and you can see that I have quite a few parts installed already. If you don't, if there are none, there's a short description on the website for how to add these in. Essentially you click this particular box, you highlight all of those libraries in the window that opens up, and you just say open, and now it loads all of those libraries into the capture software so that you can now access the libraries that you need. Let's now work with the DC voltage source. If I type VDC, I can now double click on that highlighted VDC source and my mouse or my cursor comes over to the schematic capture. I can left mouse click that and now I have dropped down a DC voltage source onto the 
construction area of the schematic capture, it looks like it's wanting me to put another source down and I can get rid of that place of a DC voltage source by hitting the escape key on my computer. Now I want to, there's several different pieces or labels to that DC source. I actually want to change the value of the DC source from 0 to 12. I highlight the label, I double click on that label and now I can see that I have the value available to select. I want to change it to 12 volts. If I'm not happy with where that's located, if it's kind of crunched on my circuit diagram, I can highlight it and move it around with my mouse. I'll hit the escape key so that I can now see what I've changed for the label. If I wanted to, I could relabel the value or the part reference here. I'm just calling it V1 and that's fine. I'm just going to stick with V1. Again, hitting escape to turn off the highlight of that label. I'm now ready to start adding in some resistors. You might pay attention or read about the units that PSPICE or CAPTURE uses. For now, I can, now that this part window is already open or the place part window is open, I can type in R or I could go back to place and part and again then type in R. Let me double click on the resistor. I have it in the horizontal direction. Let me left mouse click. I now have a second resistor. I maybe don't want it horizontal, so I'm going to hit a hot key, which is an R, and that's now going to rotate it to be vertical. I'm okay with its location. Maybe I'll move it a little bit. Now I'll left mouse click on that. Now it wants to give me a third resistor. I don't want a third resistor, so I will escape out of placing resistors onto my schematic. I'm now escaped out of that. Those are the three parts that I want. I want to wire them up. I'm going to now place wires in between the different terminals. I'll set my cursor on the top voltage source, left mouse click, and now try to get a red dot to appear on the leftmost terminal of my horizontal resistor. I still have the ability to place wires. I locate that cursor or the crosshairs over the rightmost terminal of my horizontal. I'll then go over on top of the vertical resistor and go down. Left mouse click. I've now connected that. I still have the crosshairs ready to connect wires again. I'm going to actually try to get this down. I don't want to just go straight across. Just to give me a little bit better visual on this schematic and to do that I'm going to now left mouse click and I can drag my mouse over but if I try to go up do you see how it's going to collapse that down and that's not really what I wanted. Let me escape out of that and start over. So now I'm going to place the wire again but now what I want to do is sort of give me that additional vertical change and so now I'm going to let off of my left mouse. I was holding it down. Now I'm going to continue, but now once I see that red dot, I'm going to left mouse click, and now I have my circuit interconnected the way I want. I can escape out of that, and now I have everything ready, except I can see that I don't have the resistor values quite the way I want them. I can find that label that I want to change, highlight it with a mouse click, double click to open up its value window, change that to 3. You can see the units are a lowercase k. That stands, stands for kilo for a thousand. That's what I want. Now I have my resistor values the way I want. I have my DC source the way I want. In order to run the simulation I actually have to install a ground and I'm going to place a ground the ground I want is right there. It's 0 slash CAPSIM. I can either highlight that and say OK or I can double click on it. It looks like my mouse wanted me to go ahead and hit the OK button so that's what I've done. 
I now left mouse click to place that. It's wanting to give me another ground connection. I don't want it. I'm going to escape out of that. I now need to wire that in place. So I'll place a wire. Again, I'll start by left mouse clicking on that and see the red dot where I want it. Left mouse click. No more wires. I escape out of that. I escape out of the highlighting of the wire. And now I'm ready to actually start simulating this. To simulate, I go up to PSpice. I say New Simulation Profile. Let me call this V Divide for Voltage Divider. I'll create that. It now opens up a new window, and the analysis type that we're wanting to run is not a transient analysis, but a bias point, a DC bias point analysis. We've now selected that through the drop-down menu. We'll say OK. Now that has activated some of these additional symbols that are now on our schematic capture window. We can either click the Run PSpice button or we can go to PSpice and Run. And now we've actually executed or found the bias points and we can look at those by toggling the voltage display, enable the voltage bias display, or enable the current display. In the instructions for the homework it says go ahead and toggle those a few times just to see what they're doing. Let me turn off the voltage. We're now looking at the current and we can see that each of the current labels on this schematic tell us in fact that there is 3 milliamps in series flowing through all of our circuit elements. In this case we're interested in the voltage divider behavior so let's now enable the voltage display. We now have 12 volts, 3 volts at the appropriate locations and 0 volts which means that we have 3 volts dropped across R2 and we have 12 minus 3 or 9 volts dropped across R1 and obviously we have 12 minus 0 volts dropped across the DC voltage supply which is 12 volts. We can now print that to save it by either going over here and saying File, Print, and this will give us a PDF of that run, and we can call that whatever we want. You can see that I've been exper experimenting a little bit. Let me just say that this is now a voltage divider. It's now generated an a PDF version of that circuit that we've simulated and this would allow you to title that and type in different information that you want relative to that schematic. If you wanted it to be a little bit cleaner maybe you say oh I would really like to put this into a Word document. Well you can do that. You can now left mouse click and enclose that schematic with a box, hit Control C, open up a Word document, and either say Control V or you can go home and paste. And now it's pasted that schematic here, and if you highlight it, with a left mouse click and drag that you can now make it as large as you want to maybe make it a little bit more visible and you now have captured in a clean manner your schematic with the DC bias points indicated for voltage in this particular circuit for homework, P-SPICE homework. You can then repeat this process. I can escape out of all of those highlighted versions of my circuit element. I could now create a new project to execute the current divider and really the only difference there is putting the vertical or putting your resistors vertically in the diagram and using now an I DC for a current source in a DC 
source configuration, but the simulation, the toggling of voltage and current will be the same. Capturing that will be the same, and so I think you're good to go for working through your homework assignment in PSPICE. Good luck.